We're in America. Spencer Cartier. We're in America. Spencer Cartier. B F A E C E. Nice to meet you. You too. Um, we're in America. Are we? <laughs> Cut that out. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Lamb Chop. Lamb Chop. And this here is Frank. And we're all wearing shades of green again. It's Our just favorite it's color. Just and also the Eagles. Eagles won all the way back on Sunday. Eagles won all the way back on Sunday. Um, 6 0. Yeah. 6 0. 6 0. Beat the Cowboys. I was down there. I was in the midst of the fans. On the, you were playing? I, I was. I was on the <laughs> offensive line. No, I went. I went down. Um, it was a, it was a crazy atmosphere. It was. Um, you know what I always think about when um, I'm in. I was. In, it was a huge, huge amount of people. A gross amount of people. Mm. Not in the in the sense of it being icky, but gross, as in the German word. The measurement. G. No, not not the measurement either. Oh. Um, the German word G R O, um, S E T. Oh. Which means big. <laughs> um well they were sold out the tickets went for so much so much um it was crazy but we came home with the win uh we i think we were no we didn't talk about phillies were doing well but they clinched the now they right. they've, they've passed the next stage right going to the nlcs something like that it's in the top four if i watch baseball more did you see when um jason kelsey uh threw the ball and um hurts wasn't ready yeah he felt so bad. Uh, I'm sure he's always he's, he's always. such a big guy, and he's so funny, and he's yeah. so he's like great, you know, entertainment and a huge fan favorite. But he was the way he handled it. I was like, oh my god, it looks like a little boy. <laughs> he was so furious with himself. Yeah, uh, poor Jason. But Kelly. it was it, thank God if and it, it didn't all pre- well that ends well. Yeah, and that game ended well. So uh, if you're from Philadelphia. Woot, you woot. don't have to be from Philadelphia. If you're an Eagles fan, woot woot. If yeah. you're not an Eagles fan, I suggest becoming one and you'll be rooting for the winning team. I know. I Yeah, they're number one right now. Um, I, Who's behind them? Maybe the Bills. Yeah, Bills, Chiefs. Chiefs, yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're, of course, Cowboys. <laughs> um, <laughs> You can live in Philadelphia. And I know a, a Philadelphian, they're a New England's Patriots fan. And you can live somewhere else and be a fan of the Eagles. You can be a fan of whatever you want. Or like you can, like Delaware doesn't have a team. So like they're kind of us by default. Yeah, South Jersey is big Philadelphia sports fans just because they feel closer knit to the um, the culture than they do the Northern Jersey right. sports teams being, you know, the, uh, the Now Jets. this Sunday is Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. The Steelers. No. It's not. It's a bye week. Oh, oh, that's right. I remember. I remember her saying that in the, in the post interview. Yeah. Next week, right? The, yes. When, the we, follow, when we play again, following week, we'll be going against the Steelers. Um, my divide, least favorite team. Divide our state, and we will crush them. Black and yellow. Black and yellow. Lord. All right. That's enough sports. We got to. We got to hone in on the the crowd we're speaking to. Actually, no. They're just like us. Yeah, they care enough about sports to like maybe we're they know it's by week. Maybe they don't. We're a smorgasbord of interests. We're a charcuterie board of <laughs> of endeavors. We're a butterboard. Have you seen the butterboards? We're a grab bag of entertainment. You haven't butterboard. Yeah. No. Butterboards are the are the latest um, the rage of uh, entertainers. Entertainers. That is not it. Entertaining. Oh. You have people over your house, and you put out chips and salsa was hot for a while or yeah you know the old spinach bowl in the bread yeah um now it's butter boards you take butter and you smear it all over your your serving board like you know our you know our giant yeah. wooden chopping block you just smear butter all over it That's, and, and then, then you season the butter sometimes you put like garlic or like any kind of seasoning okay. um some people want crush flowers it's like a whole thing drizzle honey yeah and then on top of that, you put like stuff you want to drag through the butter, I think, or no, maybe you just put the butter on the table. I don't know. But then all your friends come around and we all put our grubby fingers in there and we just start scraping, scraping. It sounds awful. It sounds like a mess. People are divided. Some people love the idea and they're like, I can't wait to try it. I don't know. Other like, people as say I'm no. saying it's awful. I could see myself liking it. They said as long as you don't double dip, what's the problem? It just seems like, why can't you put it in a bowl? Well, everyone says that because they want to be, it's something different. Yeah, I've never yeah, seen no, it. Well, um, you could put the spinach dip in a bowl, but yet you're hollowing out the loaf of bread. 
Yeah, but that's like that's that's like you can eat the bread still, and then the bread tastes like spinach at the end. Yeah. Um, like I'm a big fan of of the uh, soup bowl or what is it called? Bread bowls. Bread bowls. I'm a big bread bowl got a com- component it because like you get to eat Compo- the vessel. Um, <laughs> eat the vessel. <laughs> that's gonna be. My I was more worried. I was more interested in the component. Eat the vessel is gonna be my, my death metal band. <laughs> um, no, but you know what? It reminds me of this other trend that was big. Like I want to say last year, but. Anytime I think someone was a year ago, it's usually three years I ago. I know, I know. With the nachos, you know, so it's the idea you you cover your 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 marble oh, um, island table. in in saran wrap, mm-hmm. dump bags of tortilla chips, and then pour hot cheese over it, taco meat all over it, and it's like we're just eating off the table. Yeah. But it's just like it just seems impractical like i get the like and then you just look at when i'm looking at it personally personally i wouldn't before that because there's so many dry chips like you need to, you need to get a, a finite sometimes it's not about the ultimate dining experience it's no, what's about, it about something different Some, something fun sometimes you try so hard to do something different that you have to ask yourself is it this way for a it reason spices it, yeah it is you know, but like uh, if it, broke, it makes life interesting it. Does it though? My thing is, I think it's modern day social media, and I'm gonna tell you why. Modern day socialism. Modern day, so- it's modern day socialism. Go vote. Um, modern day social media because people can no longer find joy in doing the same. You don't want to post another Snapchat of a nacho bowl. It's been done. What? What, what can I do? People need to bring it back in house and say. Why am I doing the, the I disagree. nachos this way? I disagree. I, I, I like different things. I, saw, I do too. I do a, too. There's a comedian. I don't like gimmicky things. There's a com- I like gimmicks. There's a comedian. Um, he's on Instagram. He's probably on TikTok. Trey Kennedy. Trey Kennedy. And he he does his funny sticks. Sh- sh- you know, yeah, and he it's, does his little gags. He's very. Bits. He's your basic average American guy. As a matter of fact, he people tease him, and you know he leans into it. Where they send they constantly send him photos of like catalog guys and stuff, and they're yeah. like, "Is this you?" And he's like, it's not me, because he's like generic, yeah, generic white male, as they said on um in the uh, the old Johnny Depp trial. Johnny Depp trial. He did the old joke of um, you know, Fashion Week or Fashion Runway or Haute Couture, where the person you see the fashions, and it's like, yeah, it's they're ridiculous. walking like this, yeah, or they're wearing like a trash can on yeah. their head, and he was he was made a joke of it. He's like, this is crazy. Who would do this? And I was like. Do we all want to look like we're LL Bean models? Like I, I want to see the trash can on the head. I want to see them walking backwards or with one shoe on. No, but that's what like, I agree. But like that's what I'm saying. It would then become gimmicky if like everyone started doing it because it's like you do know this impractical. You do know it was done the first time to be like, whoa, look at a, what a wacky way to eat yeah. nachos. Just and then, look at look at things differently. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I do, I do like the cra- I, I I get bored if it's like. What are we wearing a white T-shirt right. and jeans on a runway? Right. No, wear the ridiculous things, and I've also almost. I mean, the a lot of the fashion people in the fashion world. I've been told, um, I'm sort of like in close with them. It's these famous uh, designers, and they make this, but then what they're selling commercially is just high end stuff. It's sort of like show it. it's like uh like cake boss or something yeah and then like then you know that, that yeah you're right you know on a daily basis they make these beautiful cakes and so even with these gimmicky things like um I, I, we were talking about that that one guy that was real popular before the tipsy bartender is that oh yeah 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 he yeah. would make these ridiculously mm-hmm. um strange drinks that like would be so impractical to buy 12 ingredients and it's like but then if you, you just you go to a, a house party and you ask for a drink and they're like, well, hold on, I'm, I'm going to put all 12 of these together. And it's yeah. like, try it, try it. Right. It's like, I would have just preferred if you had given well, yeah. me a seltzer. Yeah, definitely. You know what else I'm thinking? And um, then we'll go to the next thing uh, is remember a few years ago, I think Lady Gaga had it, the the high heel shoes, but there was no heel. Uh, it was yeah. like it was like a hoof or it was something. Yeah. So it was crazy. It was like it was like a stretch of your mind. Oh, I've never seen that. That's odd. But then regular everyday people were buying them. Yeah. And then you realized she only had it on a photo shoot or something. And it, so generally I, I don't agree that everything has to be practical, but there, like you said, there's a reason, you know, yeah. but you know, good things come out of it. Cause like you said about the cake shows and stuff, I, I think that's how cake pops were born of people thinking like, cause all we had was 
we had cakes and then we had cupcakes, but it was kind of like stagnant after. Yeah, and no, then I, I mean, that's cake pop. I mean, I didn't grow up with cake pops. I'm, I'm not. I'm not anti innovation. Let me okay. let me retract my statement. You're not. You're not anti. I'm not anti innovation. I am. I think the idea of innovation is is the thought behind it. And if you're thinking of let me try something new, that's fine. Yeah. You should all, even if it's a silly idea, but. I think the good thing that will come out of this, if I may. The butterboard or? The butterboard. Okay. Is, yeah, after a while, people are going to realize it must be a beep to clean. Yeah. You just smeared a butter, ba- you know, yeah. all over your thing. It's going to be very hard to clean. That's number one. That's what I'm thinking of. But what I think will be good to come out of it is seasoned butters because you don't really see seasoned butter yeah, butters yeah. Um, on, just on the shelf. So like you could buy your own little garlic. I mean, they have garlic butter, but you know what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, no. Make it more normal. Oh, and I, yeah, I definitely agree with that. I'm fi- my first thought was the waste. True. I I just feel like you can't pr- possibly save anything. Also, than never save anything. Like yeah, when you're just scraping, I imagine you and you end up with a board full yeah. of butter. It's not in a bowl. That's like either one, you're you keep going in the same bowl area located place, so you're getting it all. Like imagine just sw- get that butter out of your head. Pour salsa flat down. Right. You're never going to get all that salsa. No, that's when true. it's in the jar or in a bowl, you're getting all that salsa. All right. And I hate waste. Okay. So it is um, It is what, oh, October 18th. Okay. It is. So today, not in America, but in Canada. Sorry. It is the, but I, you'll, you're going to like it because it's the 22nd. So they've been doing it for year, decades. The 22nd annual child care worker and early childhood educator day. That's me. Did you know that you're an ECE? That's what they call them. Oh, ECEs. Should I start signing my yeah. emails like that? Yeah, you're not you're not you're not just nothing. You're an early childhood educator. I'm an ECE. Spencer Cartier, B A E C E. Okay, so B F A E C E. We're in America. Spencer Cartier. We're in America. Spencer Cartier, B F A E C E. Nice to meet you. You too. Um we're in America. Are we? <laughs> Cut that out. Okay. So in a, in um that's our our day is the Friday before Mother's Day. I find it sexist, and it is um, appreciation only. And what is this one? This one is the uh, the theme for this year is worth more financially. Financially, so Canadians, the people who are involved in this, um, say it's all about hey Canadian government, hey Trudeau. We need money. You need to fund high quality uh, child care and early education centers, government, uh, you know, um, subsidized or whatever, because there's a crisis. Uh, the workers aren't getting enough money. People can't afford to put their kids in. And there's a whole thing. And so they are pushing for um, better working conditions, and nonprofit, accessible, affordable, high quality. High quality. Because you have to remember, Spencer. Thank you. ECE's working conditions are children's learning conditions. Oh, yeah. Had a parent come in and complain. Really? That the, uh, this wasn't, this wasn't nothing to do with me because it was upstairs, which are the babies. Yeah. And they're like, we came in and your workers looked tired and, and burnt out. Wow. That's what, yeah, it's exactly what this is saying. And, um, you know, so the, the first question would be, that's not a complaint about any of the services being provided, right. but if a person's working condition, so the parents' worry is burnout employees equate to less care to yeah. the kids or, right. or more than they can handle, frustration, all that. So, um, and I'm like, should have came downstairs. So you would have saw <laughs> quality, quality and energy and energy, <laughs> open eyes. So that's America. Uh, that's Canada, and so that's what I like about it. When they have these days, these um, these ECE, yeah, a little celebratory, yeah, days. more than celebratory, because you know a lot of these pat ourselves or pat those people on the back. Well, that's what the this American is, one is. What else? Right. What else? The American one. The reason I said I found it to be sexist is because it is. It's the Friday before Mother's Day, so you're kind of calling them mothers. It's also the Friday before my birthday, though, so it might all be based around me. And also that that it's just it's just said like for um you know for the Canadian one it's like pick pick the right politician and yeah. do this this one is say thank you to someone who's watching your kids yeah. or teaching your kids it's yeah. like that's one, that's one of those things I always say it's like we don't want thank yous right we want checks 
And the other thing about America, which I don't know what's going on in Canada because I'm not Canadian, but we are in a health we are in a healthcare we are in a healthcare crisis. I'm so used to saying that that I was going to say this wrong. The child care. Um, when I when when my children were small, we had to pay, which I still think they must. Um, more than half Pennsylvania has who have three and four year olds. They have to pay for public school. So you think public school is free when you're five. So you have to pay. And I had oh. to pay a lot. Um, I, re- I remember. You paid a lot. You didn't send anyone of us to. Avalon. Avalon. I ha- I she went to an Philadelphia. academy. No, but in, she went to I know. No, but for, when, she was, when she was four years old, she went to a Philadelphia public school, Kennedy Crossing. And I, it cost a lot. So um, Biden, he had the Build Back Better Act. Whoa. Jill Biden was at the game on Sunday. She got booed. Why? Because Philly fans are bleeps. Well, she's a teacher and she's lovely. And she loves it. She's from Philly. Or she, she's like a Philly sports fan. Of course. They, That's terrible. They also threw snowballs at Santa Claus. So. But come on. They gave they gave Meek Mill the ball, but they booed uh, so Biden. I, I don't Jill know. Biden. I don't know if she really was booed. It's, you know, like there's boo. There was. I can't. She probably didn't know. Whatever. No, I yeah. can't say how many people there were there. It was like a crazy amount. And it's sort of like you can hear whatever you want to hear. And I'm pretty sure it was like a Fox News article. And it was like. Well, I, yeah, I only saw the back of her because well, I was I watched the game on the on the TV. Biden had a Build Back Better Act. Build Back and Better Act. She's a teacher and she always promised that she was really going to help education in America and the little kids and everything. She has I thought she was a doctor. Grandchildren. Um, she might. I mean, teachers can be doctors. You could doctor <laughs> okay. in education. Um. So it was going to be the, what what he had drawn his administration had drawn up was like really really great yeah. for the little ones like that you teach, um, funding for the schools, funding for the teachers, no problems, no ki- you know parents weren't being suffocated yeah. with the bill didn't go through. Um, Thanks, guys. Yeah, I don't know their names who didn't go through. See, so they they fought it for. A while so just in august the something came out it's called the inflation reduction act you know i think everyone was getting applause for that at the time the inflation reduction act which did do do good stuff but for energy climate and drug costs and it kind of like the little kid section of no here's my kind of um, i don't mean out. to get political kind of got kicked out and i'm not going to say which side is what but why does it always seem like the things are that are just like genuinely like there's I feel like there's a side of politics that just hears something good and says, why would we do that? I know who, who you know, these things of like who would be against that when you hear let's give more money to our little children, three, four or five year olds who will become our big who, citizens <laughs> and, and you say. Nah, it doesn't sound good. Right. And I'll tell you why. It's selfishness. Yeah. And I'm not pointing out any sides or whatever. I'm just going to talk about this specific issue. It's selfishness, and I'm going to tell you why. The people who are against this bill, and I can almost guarantee this, Mm -hmm. are the people who can afford their kids to go to very good schools. So they're saying, my kids are just fine. I don't want to pay a dollar for that kid over there. And that's where just true selfish. Like It's one thing when people have like, oh, well, I, I don't want my money going to something i disagree with yeah but when it's just like you do you disagree with three-year-old children right no i also don't want to help them they're right. not mine it's pure selfishness all right so i'll take you away from there yeah get me away from there and i'll Can take you away? to happy national exascale day what exascale mm-hmm. exascaleton <laughs> no it's october 18th so that's 10 18 and 10 18 is a measure of supercomputer performance it's um it is really, really fast. It's really, really fun. It's really, really fast. So it's for the fastest supercomputers in the world. Okay. Um, exascale is defined as quintillion computations per second. That's too many. It's not too many. It w- it's going to help us solve everything in the world. Well, I can imagine. Quintillion? Because I can't even count that high. The human brain contains 100 billion neurons. To reach one... Con- Quintillion would require ten thousand people. So wait, thank, I never even got to my point. About thank the, you, supercomputers. I never even got to. Speaking of ten thousand people, I never got to my point way back when about the Eagles game. I saw so many people there. Okay. Yada yada. You probably saw exascale amount. I you would you would think, 
And anytime I'm in an environment like that, I simply think there's too many people. I know. And not in a in a way that I think any of them should be gone or, right. or we should we should cut down. You just but, you can't really fathom it. But when you're not yes, counting that. Correct. <laughs> because I was at one game that was a small portion of just the city that I reside in. Right. And yet you can't even fathom the amount of people that are there. And it's like it's right now it's just you and me in this room. We have his neighbor on that side, that side, that side, and that side. Yeah. So you don't think about how many people there There's are. There's so many. And God loves them all and knows every hair on every one of their and ain't heads. ain't that crazy. That's fantastic. It's One Word Wednesday. Hey, it's One Word Wednesday, a day where we talk about a word and maybe talk about some spiritual stuff of it. The word is fleece. Fleece. F-L-E-E-C-E. Yeah. Um, why? Well, <laughs> I didn't know his shirt would open. <laughs> um, it's interesting. Fleece? All right, well, give me the, okay. the world history of it. Um, well, fleece is fleece. Fleece kid. This is polyester, I'm sure. But true fleece comes from uh, a sheep. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't. Oh, you and the sheep and the wool and the fiber festivals. Listen, they're, they're still going on, but they're fiber moving, festivals. They're moving. They're ba moving. <laughs> no. Um, we live on the east coast, so ours were like for the past couple weeks because the warm weather, and yeah. now they're kind of. Now you could get to one in like Texas, the, these okay. the, the um, fiber festival with the fleece. Yeah, the anyway, we're not fiber doing fiber; festival. we're doing fleece. And fleece is well, um, fleece is a fiber. Then it's it's uh, when you shear the sheep, you get the fleece. You, I thought you got the wool. Uh, fleece turns into wool when you do stuff with it, like clean it and brush it and wash it and dry it. But that's his fleece. You 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 shaved off his fleece. Oh, yeah. Um, so, but there could also be polyester fleece. And so they just make it like ugh, this man not, not wanting to be dressed. The, you, you artificially try to replicate the soft, um, <laughs> stop it. The soft pile, this, you know, the, the kind of raised uh, yeah. texture of it. Um, but there's also something called, oh, because, okay. When you, sh when you shear the sheep, you take the fleece off of him. So that has evolved into a saying. And you ever hear someone say that? Fleece the sheep. No. Like uh, you were fleeced if someone took money from you. Um, officer, officer. Dishonestly. That fleeced me. Or if they charge you too much money, right? So like if you. I've been fleeced. If you, maybe the tickets for the Eagles game, if you had bought it, you'd be like, I was fleeced. I was, I've been fleeced. And for the Bible, there's a in new international version, there's only two. There's only um, two references. I'm surprised there's that many. One in Job, and he's just, he, this is when he's telling um, the friend, I, I never did anything wrong. Like, why am I being abused? <laughs> no, why am I? He, he said, like, I would, she, I would take the fleece uh, off my sheep and I would give it to somebody who, who was cold. Yeah. He said that. But the, but the more, I mean, the bigger story was um, Gideon. Gideon is a warrior for um, God. G i d d e o n. He, G i d e o n. He in judges. He is um, worried that he can't do what God wants him to do. Mm. So he makes God prove it because I'm afraid to go out there. So he put a fleece on the ground and he said, "When I wake up, if the fleece is wet and the ground is dry from the dew, mm. only the fleece got wet. Then I'll know that you can hear me." You're going to be with me and I can do it. He woke up. It was completely wet. He squeezed it into a bucket. He was Ooh, like, I God, is, that water. God is real. I'm, I can do it. And he went out and did it. Guess what he did a little while later when God said, do something else. He said, show me again. Show me again. This time yeah. I want the fleece to stay dry and I want the ground to be wet. And God did it again. Um, and so that's why there is a saying as well. It's called laying out the fleece. And it's when... You're, you want to force God to prove to you. Give me a sign, God. It's got to be God. I, th I think so. I don't I don't know because I've never heard that saying. I have heard fleecing you for money. Never heard laying out like, the fleece. I, feel like I, I would like that saying. I feel like it was more like for anything of like you need someone to like you're, you're at your last wit's end with your boyfriend. He's, he's, he's given up and you're like you're talking to your you're, you give him like an uh, ultimatum. Yeah. And you're talking to your girlfriends and you're like 
Listen, I laid out the fleece for him. It's up. It's up to him. Yeah, maybe he can catch on. Yeah, I laid out. I'm just gonna we say. Can... I'm gonna say it as if it's something. Okay. And then have people. They'll be like. They'll assume. What's that? No, they'll like assume. Then, uh, oh, oh, and, and then, then they'll look it up. Only after a while will they ask. Like, you say that a lot, and I'm like. No, but the good thing is, even if they Google it, they'll, oh, they'll think they're dumb. Like yeah, you could just be like, it's enough. You don't know that. Thing. Yeah, because you can Google yeah. it. Okay, I need to start giving out ultimatums so that I can use it. All right, so we got. Five minutes where you're going to tell us if it's a good idea to force God to prove things to you. Um. Well, it's interesting because he did prove it twice. And so I think it's two sides. It's Old Testament. Yeah. So, no, but I'm saying like it would be sort of an easier comparison if the second time he said no. Just do what I say. Because it's like I'm saying, well, you know, he proved it both times. But I do find we find ourselves doing that all the time. Um, Trying to get this reassurance, reassurance, reassurance. And. It can sometimes I I feel like be a little negative like um or you, I, obviously everyone wants the one thing but I think even on a small scale we do get these things in our faithful based lives and then we can still always just get oh no like uh, you sort of forget it right and oh yeah I, I think it's important to try to like remember that you laid the fleece out and it was wet and. If you're always waiting for reassurance, it's like, um, you know, you learn how to ride a bike and you just keep looking back. It's like, right. You you just did it. Like, don't look at me. Like, you know, you know, I'm here. Right. So are, are, are you still there? Are you, st- are you still there? Yeah. Are you still making sure I'm okay? And it's like, but then there's like, a, I think that, that's sort of what, it, what it's like. Um, that's what I'm going to compare it to because, you know, I'm, I'm working. I'm an ECC, so mm-hmm. everything's ECC. Ki- everything's e. every, ECE. everything's kids and children or children and God to me. Life lessons. Um, and it's like that. And that's what you know. So God did do it again. But on a per- like, so just like a, a parent would do to a child of like anytime they did need that reassurance, they would give it to you. But there's a certain point where you need to on your own know that that person's there for you. Right. You don't always need to say, it's, you know, it's like a girlfriend or, or, or a boyfriend or a wife or a husband where it's like, do you still love me? Do you still, you right. know, like, sort of like a childish relationship. Right. Yeah. And it, it gets annoying, but the person, if they love you, they'll say, yes, I still love right. you. Yes, I still love you. Right. Yes, I still love you. But at a certain point, you got to realize like they love you. So now just now, right. let, now live According to that love, you don't need to always be right, asking, because do you love me? It is selfish me, though, right? Uh, did you say that from the beginning? You said something was selfish. Oh no, you said that the um, people who wouldn't pay for childcare were selfish. Um, <laughs> because you're not, as for a relationship like you just spoke of, you think it's no big deal. Like I keep asking you for, you know, do you love me? Do you love me? But it's kind of a big deal because oh, good point. Good you point. could say, what about me? Like why, what am I doing that's making you feel not yeah you know yeah like, like, like almost, i'm not here just to yeah yeah like that that you know when someone when, when if someone tells you that they love you that's a big deal but to keep asking is right. in a way questioning right their love yeah and so in a way of always asking for the fleece to be wet or dry is you were there for because i don't know what i don't remember i should say what the, the gideon story right. of what he was Actually, he- of, I'm a little foggy. of what he was helped with or what his mission was after the first one. But then to like say that he's there for you and, and like believe and have faith. And then ask again is a little bit of a, do you like, why like, do you do not have faith in me? Do you not like, right. believe in me? Cause I, and that's what faith is. I mean, and besides all of that, just on a side note, it's like faith is sort of based on, knowing that that they're there with the, you, know, you don't always need the tangible signs right it's that it's that belief and if you are one of these people that's like oh well you know if god did this then i believe in him then you're going at it the wrong way and you know i guess it's 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 it, it can all it's funny because you know god is love but it can be compared compared back to that do you love me thing right and it's like always asking like do you love me do you love me it's like how about you stop and, and see what they're doing for you right so you see what they've done in the relationship right and, yeah they'll say it you know just like he wet the thing first but at one point do you even need him to say it he did all the things that that proved his love rather than having to always tell you it and and you could kind of put this in mind he doesn't we talked about this many times god doesn't need you 
got the same way he could wet the fleece, he could win the battle yeah. without you. So he's giving you this opportunity. Look, go do this. And I, you know, and then it's like, well, no, wet the fleece. It's like with a parent, really, yeah. you know, if I eventually the parent says, I'll do it myself. Like, yeah. why am I, you know, having. Yeah. And just like the, the love analogy, it's like that person is choosing to love. Like that person's choosing to be in a relationship with you right. and do all the things they do. And it's like, they obviously, like, oh, they're doing all those things because they love you. Right. And then to then like, oh, but I need the affirmation. It's like, well, sometimes you don't. Some Sometimes it, it's better to trust in what is like, the life you're living yeah. rather than the exact of like, but just say it, just, just, right. just say it. So I know it's like, well, all of the things that I've, I've, I've done for you and been for there for you. Has that not proved it? Right. I don't know. That's, that's neither here nor there. Um, shout out ECCs, shout out LQRs, BCEs. shout out QR codes. ST. Um, <laughs> QR ST. I am Spencer Cardier. Oh, uh, L- uh, Lamb Chop is the is Shari and Lamb Chop, the puppet that, you know, you've seen her. You grew up with her. She's old timey, but we still played it. Spencer Cardier, Lamb Chop, Frank the Tank, signing out. Now the slow walk to the, <laughs> to the thing.